In an Australian university, Aiden is attending his philosophy class. Mr. Wirtz asks everyone why they think we are here, and there's a variety of answers from students, from religious perspectives to the scientific explanation of atoms. Aiden though doesn't have much to say, he believes in the unknown and in the fact that they'll never know for sure. Mr. Wirtz doesn't like this nothing of an answer and changes to what happens after death, so Aiden answers he thinks we've all been dead a lot longer than we've been alive. Then, Mr. Wirtz makes them turn over the papers he gave them early, where only one exercise tops the exam page with a simple question, why? After class, Aiden goes to get his bicycle in order to go home, and he's shocked to be suddenly approached by a man that looks just like him, including the same clothes. This man tells him not to go to the Heathscape Motel, then he just runs away. Aiden tries going after him but loses sight of him before he can catch him. Afterward, Aiden returns home and tries to tell his roommates Nick and Jess about what happened, but they ignore him and keep talking between them. Later in the afternoon, Aiden goes to visit his grandma at the retirement home, where Aiden gets a call asking for a middle name before he quickly hangs up. Then, Aiden tells his grandma about the exam and the fact something weird happened to him, but grandma promises there's no history of mental illness in the family. Aiden's grandfather died in a golf accident from drowning in a lake, and she misses him terribly. Speaking of special someones, grandma wonders when Aiden will propose to his girlfriend Lauren, but instead of telling the truth and confessing they broke up, Aiden tells her they're thinking about it before he grabs a book to read to his grandma as he always does. Later, curiosity gets the better of him and Aiden decides to visit the Heathscape Motel, where he's shocked to find out Lauren is the receptionist. After swearing this is a coincidence, Aiden asks her if he's been there before, but she responds he hasn't. Their conversation is cut short by the motel manager, so Aiden leaves the building not to get Lauren into trouble. He doesn't return home though, he waits outside until her shift is over to invite her to a nearby diner. There, Aiden tells Lauren the story behind him coming to the motel, which she isn't sure she can believe. They share some news about their current lives and have dinner while ignoring the noises of someone falling to the floor and dropping a bunch of stuff. When they're done, Aiden offers Lauren to give her a ride, which she accepts. Night falls while they're on the road, and Lauren decides she must confess something to Aiden. However, before she can say anything, she notices something blocking the road and grabs the wheel to try to avoid it, but sadly, they crash anyway. Aiden only sees her bleeding head before passing out. The next morning, Aiden wakes up in the hospital, and Nick and Jess are there with him. They're acting rather awkwardly though, and not only because they don't know how to tell Aiden that Lauren died. He's also visited by a couple of detectives that tell Aiden he can't leave the hospital because Lauren's family is pressing charges, so a lawyer will come the next day to advise him through the process. In the evening, Aiden is bothered by patient X, who wants to play a word game to keep their minds off things. Aiden turns him down because he isn't in the mood for games, so to get his attention, patient X confesses he knows something weird has happened to Aiden. He can't give him all the details because Aiden needs to figure it out for himself, but he can give him a hint, he needs to go to the Heathscape Motel and find a hole in the bathroom of room 41. Aiden waits for the doctor to do her night checkup and bring him the medicine before slipping out of bed, changing in the bathroom, and escaping through the stairs. After stopping to buy a rehydrating drink, Aiden goes to the motel, where the manager has taken over the reception and is talking on the phone about Lauren's incoming funeral. Once the manager hangs up, Aiden asks for a room and is given number 11. He decides to wait there for a while watching the reports of the accident on TV, and once it's late enough for people to be deeply asleep, Aiden sneaks out and goes to room 41. The door is obviously locked, so Aiden breaks in through the window, finding the room empty. First, he checks every piece of furniture for any clues, but he finds nothing. Then he goes to the bathroom, where he finds a fake panel on the floor covering the whole patient X told him about. Aiden watches it for a while, trying to guess its secrets, and decides to hide inside when he hears the manager coming into the room to check why the lights are on. When he comes out a moment later, he's surprised to find patient X jumping on the bed, drinking and playing with a tool. He doesn't recognize him though, in fact he threatens Aiden, ordering him to leave him alone. Aiden rushes outside and is shocked to see not only that it's already afternoon, but he can also see himself asking Lauren to go to the diner. It turns out the hole in the bathroom has allowed him to travel 12 hours back in time. Aiden follows the pair to the diner, sitting a few tables away from them and hiding his face behind a newspaper he finds around. Without realizing it, he sat next to Mr. Wirtz, who immediately recognizes his student and congratulates him on his good work on the exam. He also invites him to the weekly meetings he has with some colleagues at his house, but Aiden ignores him and tries to leave before they're overheard by his other self. On his way out he bumps into a waitress making her drop her tray, which is the interruption the other Aiden and Lauren are distracted by during their talk. It is also revealed that during that conversation, Aiden tells Lauren that he never told his grandma that they broke up, which Lauren finds kinda weird even if she knows how much grandma liked her. The next moments proceed as future Aiden remembers them, Lauren and himself get in the car together and leave, so Aiden runs to try to warn them about the accident. However, him walking in the middle of the road turns out to be the reason the accident happens in the first place. It's him that Lauren sees and causes her to try to dodge him. 
Upset but still determined to fix things, Aiden runs back to the motel and finds patient X unconscious on the bed after he tried to end things. Aiden uses the room's phone to call an ambulance, which would send patient X to the hospital where he would meet the other Aiden in the morning. Then, he enters the bathroom hole to reset the day again. This time, Aiden goes home and tells Nick and Jess everything. Obviously they don't believe him, so Aiden makes Nick call his phone. Nick does so, revealing he is the one that calls present Aiden at the retirement home and asks him for his brother's middle name to be sure it's really him. Jess and Nick are still skeptical though, and seeing he can't do much to convince them, Aiden asks them to act surprised when the stuff he's told them about does happen. This explains how awkward they act at the hospital. Aiden leaves and, after lots of thinking, he decides to try to change things again. This time, he goes to the road and waits for his second self to appear to push him away, but unfortunately, the car crash happens anyway. Desperate and unwilling to give up, Aiden grabs Lauren's body and takes it back to the motel with him to put it in the bathroom hole before climbing in himself. However, once time goes back to the previous day, Lauren's body disappears. This time, Aiden decides to go to Mr. Wirtz's house for that meeting with colleagues he had mentioned. Aiden tells them what has been happening to him while pretending it's a novel he's trying to write, and he wants to hear some ideas on how to help the character fix the timeline. The other professors think going back in time to save the girl is a cliché story that needs some twists, but they answer his questions anyway. Going back in time shouldn't be possible because the past has already happened, besides, time doesn't exist in nature, it's only a measurement of movement in space. Those who do think time traveling could be a thing have two different theories. Some say time is circular and traveling sends you back to the same point, others think each trip creates an alternate timeline. Either way, Aiden can't change his own result, at most he could change the future for an alternate self. Before Aiden leaves, Mr. Wirtz confesses that when he was a kid, he dreamed of being visited by a time traveler that came all the way back to fix his life. He also reminds Aiden that his character should only go back for the right reasons and only influence the most important situations. Afterward, Aiden goes to a convenience store, where he sees a newspaper with an article about Lauren's death. It's here that the detectives manage to find him and arrest him. Once they make it to the station, the detectives explain that Aiden's escape from the hospital makes him look like he's hiding something, so he better has a good reason why he left. While a mysterious person is outside approaching the station, the detectives hit Aiden to make him confess Lauren's murder. Aiden decides to get cheeky and tell them about the time-traveling deal, but the detectives don't believe him because then he should have broken himself out of custody. It's then revealed that the mysterious person outside is another Aiden, who makes everyone in the station evacuate the building by making a threatening phone call. The detectives leave as well and handcuff Aiden to a post together with a mentally unstable addict, who can't stop flailing and accidentally hits a trash can behind him. When the can falls, Aiden discovers there's been a saw under it waiting for him, thus he changes places with the addict, drags the saw over with his foot, and uses it to break the handcuffs. Aiden begins running away, avoiding the road and jumping through people's backyards to try to lose the detectives that are now chasing him. Eventually, he finds a parking lot and hides under a car, causing the cops to drive by without seeing him. Afterward, he breaks into a neighbor's tool shed and finds a saw that he uses to take off the other half of the handcuffs. Then he realizes this is the same saw the other Aiden left for him, so he takes it back to the motel with him and enters the hole. Once he's traveled back in time again, he takes the saw to the police station and put it under the trash cache for the next Aiden that gets arrested. Next, Aiden goes to the diner to have some time to think, and discovers he's sitting next to patient X. The man is looking much better and he's even wearing a suit, but he doesn't remember Aiden. This means he has managed to change his past, which Aiden confirms when he asks the man about his occupation and if things could have gone differently for him. Patient X explains he's a lawyer but he almost went to war, and only a strange incident stopped him from going. He refuses to go into detail about what happened, although he does still remember the word game. After Patient X leaves, Aiden gets a call from the retirement home saying his grandma doesn't have much time left. Wasting no time, Aiden goes to see her, and after grandma wishes her husband could have been here with her, she asks Aiden to read to her one last time. Later, Aiden visits his grandpa's grave in the old abandoned house where his grandparents raised him after his mother left him. Starting to have an idea of what is the right thing to do, Aiden makes a graphic of the timelines to make sure he's got the math right and goes back to room 41. Patient X is there jumping on the bed again, and this time, he remembers him. He teases Aiden, telling him he can't stop him from using the tool because he needs him to go to the hospital and tell him about this room in the first place, you can only influence time but not interfere. Their conversation is interrupted by the manager coming over to check on the noises, so Aiden and Patient X hide in the bathroom. There, Patient X explains to Aiden that the trick is to stop the person from being in the situation in the first place and reminds him that time travels with him before jumping into the hole. Aiden gets inside the hole as well but this time, after returning to the previous day, he immediately gets back in to travel even further into the past. He begins doing this constantly, jumping one day at a time as different guests stay in the room. He only leaves the building a couple of times to check on important moments, like his breakup with Lauren and their first date. 
After jumping through thousands of days, Aiden eventually makes it all the way to his grandparents' young years, finding his grandpa practicing golf near the lake. The two of them chat for a while, and then grandpa takes Aiden back to his house, which is still brand new, so he can get his car and give Aiden a ride. His grandma is also there, looking young, beautiful, and reading as usual, and Aiden can't help shocking her by quoting something she always said to him. Aiden returns to the motel after giving his grandpa a gift, making him promise he would only open it the next day. The following morning, when grandpa goes golfing, he accidentally loses the ball in the lake he considers jumping in to recover it, but then he remembers Aiden has gifted him a second ball and uses that one to keep practicing. This prevents grandpa from drowning, and now in the future, an older grandpa appears next to grandma at the retirement home. Since he can't travel forward, only backward, Aiden stays in the motel and lets the years pass naturally, eventually becoming the man known as the motel manager. On the day the accident is supposed to happen, old Aiden visits the abandoned house again while present Aiden is in his philosophy class, answering the why question with why not. When present Aiden leaves the university, this time he's approached by old Aiden, who tells him to go to the Heathscape Motel. Present Aiden does exactly that and old Aiden watches from afar how Lauren accepts present Aiden's invitation to walk her home. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.